take a look today at a kind of an unusual conversation between Moses and God. And Moses was a little apprehensive about the future and he needed reassurance from God and God gives it to him. Uh, none of us need assurance from God, right? We're good. God, we don't need God's assurance, right? Yeah, we all need that, right? So we're going to take a look at what God said to Moses and in our own lives and in our own struggles to find reassurance from the promises that God makes. Uh, those of you online, oh, it switched, okay. Those of you online, just so you know, in the weeks ahead, I'm not sure when, but in the weeks ahead, we will be switching our streaming service to our website. So we'll be off of Facebook and go directly to our website. Just pay attention for that. If one of these weeks you go to Facebook and it's not there, check out our website, okay? Um, let's join together in worship. Let's stand and join together in song. Our opening song is Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Blessings on your worship today. <laughs>
follow along with the order of worship. We worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. Praise our God, all you his servants. You who fear him both small and great. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad, and give him glory. Amen. O God of peace, we turn aside from an unsettled world, seeking rest for our spirits and life for our thoughts. We bring our work to be sanctified, our wounds to be healed, our sins to be forgiven, and our hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony and peace. Draw us to you and ease the tensions of our lives. Lead us out of the emptiness of this world and fill us with your peace. For Jesus' sake, amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord, our life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ then through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the verses.
us and he strengthens us and he blesses us and he reveals his love to us and today we read responsibly Psalm 62 and find it printed in the program. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence. They fully intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take delight in lies. Their mouths they bless. But in their hearts they curse. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. For our good hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Low-born men are but a breath, and high-born are but a lie. If weighed on the balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion, or take pride in stolen gifts. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard. That you, O oh God, are strong, and that you, O oh Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forever and ever. We're going to skip the reading right now of Exodus chapter 33. That's the sermon text, and I'll read through it at that time. So we'll skip ahead to Romans chapter 7. Paul is writing about the struggle of following Christ, right? I do not understand what I do, but what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. If I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do not do what I, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Invite forward the children for a special message. We'll change it up here a little bit. Let's have a seat right down there for me. I'm going to sit on the step. Yes. Oh, the children's section. Well, guess what? No one's sitting in. So we'll do it on. All right. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. No, much better. How are you guys today? That's good. So, do all of you know your name? Yeah. Do you know what's your name? Ava. Do you know your name? Maddie, do you know your name? Gideon. Yeah, it's nice to have, know your name and have other people know your names too, right? It's 
So the church I was at before this one, we had a school of 300 kids. And I wanted to know all the kids' names, but guess what? When there's 300 kids, what? It's hard to know all their names. So I go on the playground and I play cricket with them, try and learn all the different names of all the kids in the school. And by the end of the year, I usually was pretty good and I could name almost all the kids. That's nice, right? But that's about all. Because there was so many kids, I had trouble not only knowing their names, but knowing who they were or what grade they were in or what they were good at because there was just too many what? Too many kids. Yeah. Today in the sermon, we're going to talk about the fact that God knows our name. And it isn't just that he knows our name. It's that he knows a lot more about us than just our name. Right? There's a passage in the Bible that says that God even knows how many hairs are on your head. How many hairs are on your head? I want you to start counting, Gideon. Start counting the hairs on your head. You know what? I, do? I tell you, Brad, start counting the hairs on Ava's head. It's hard to count your own. So you can count the hairs on her head. No, why not? Because there's chunks. <laughs> Some of them are tangled together. Yeah. Yeah. How many hairs are on your head, Charlotte? Do you know? No. God knows you so well that he even knows the number of hairs that are on your head. You don't. So that means that God knows you better than you have much hair. Yeah. God knows you even more, even better than you know yourself. Think about that. So God you have a lot of dresses, yeah. I'm losing them. I got two dresses. You have two dresses? Okay. My, All right. my sister has yours. All right, we're talking about hair. <laughs> hair, hair. My sister has one. Your sister has one. I'm losing you all. Okay. Wait, listen. Pay attention here. Pay attention. Give me, give me one minute, okay? What that means is not only does God love you, but he knows exactly who you are. He's always going to take care of you because he knows you so very well. Isn't that good to know? Yeah, he knows you better than your mommy knows you, better than your daddy knows you, better than your teacher knows you, better than your friends know you, better than even you know you. He knows you perfectly. And that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for knowing us, for loving us, Lord God. Help us to trust that every day, whatever we face, that you know who we are and what we're going through and what we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can go have a seat. Yes. He knows how many atoms you are on us. Yeah, that is true. All right. Um, let's join together in confessing our faith. Uh, with the words, we're going to sing the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand and join together in song.
Mm -hmm. Hold our hands, bow our heads, say a prayer. Lord God, thank you for the day and for your word to guide us. Help us today to not fear, but to trust that whatever may come, you are with us and you are working on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, <laughs> ten years ago, would you have guessed that you have dealt with, that you would have dealt with the things that you're dealing with right now? Just think back for a minute what it was like ten years ago, maybe twenty years ago. And you think of all the stuff that you went through and you say to yourself, I never would have guessed that I would have what? gone through all of that. The things that we have to face in life, the challenges that there are, the disappointments, the diseases, the issues. You never know what's coming, right? How many of you can predict the future? Nobody? No one has been given the gift of prophecy? Can't really, can you? There's certain things about the future you know. Those are the things that we're going to find comfort in today. Because there's so much about the future that you don't know. I tried to find a nice way to sum up this conversation that we're going to look at with, between Moses and God. But there's just no way to do it. There's so much going on here. And there's so, much, um, so many things for us to wrestle with and to consider. That really all I'm going to do is read through the text. And we're going to talk about it phrase by phrase. Because it just... It, there's no good way to go through all this. At least I couldn't think of one. So I'll give you some background here. What's happened is Moses has led the people of Israel up out of Egypt, rescued them from slavery. They're at the bottom of Mount Sinai. They've been there for, I think, over a month. Moses has gone up and down the mountain about five times. Uh, goes up. There's a thunder and lightning and the trumpet call of God on top of Mount Sinai. All the people are camped out below. Moses goes up the mountain. God says, tell the people this. So Moses goes running down the mountain. He tells the people this. The people respond. See, Moses goes back up the mountain. Says, the people said this. And God says, go back and tell them this. So five times he's going or something like that. He's going up and down the mountain. The last time he's up there for 30 days, and God writes on two stone tablets the Ten Commandments, the covenant of God. Moses comes down the mountain holding the two stone tablets that God had written with his own finger. And he gets to the bottom and the people of Israel in, in joy and in celebration and in faith in their Lord God are doing what? Worshipping the golden calf. And in anger, Moses throws them down on the ground and he breaks the tablets of God. And it wasn't just Moses who was upset. It was God. Prior to this, as they wandered through the wilderness, as they came up out of Egypt, it was the Lord God Almighty who led them in a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud in the day. And in remembrance, to remind them of their sin and their failure, God says, I'm not going to do that anymore. Now an angel is going to lead you. And Moses is sitting here wondering if he can do the task that God had given him to do of leading the people of Israel. The person that God gave him to help him lead these people was his brother Aaron. Guess who led the whole worshiping of the golden calf? Aaron. So now who's going to help him do this task? How is he going to lead this people who are so rebellious, so stiff-necked and difficult that they're worshiping a golden calf as God thundered on the mountain? And Moses says, I don't know that I really want. I don't know that I want to do this anymore. Because I don't know what's going to come. I don't know what we're going to face. I don't know what this is all going to be like. And he goes to the Lord God with his concern. You and I don't know our future either. We don't know what challenges we're going to face. The difficulties they're going to be. 
sometimes we look at the challenges that we're dealing with right now and the uncomfortable situations we have right now and the outright opposition that we have and it overwhelms us keeps us up at night makes us wonder how long this all is going to last and we don't know if we want to deal with what's coming in the future just like Moses, God reminds us of certain things about the future that we do know. <coughs> things that have to do with him. So, Exodus chapter 33. Printed in the program for you. We're just going to read it a little bit at a time. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me. So he's reminding God as if God had forgotten. You have been telling me, God. Uh... Lord, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. Stop right there. You've given me this task of leading this people. These people have been proven to be very what? The task that you have given me has proven to be very what? Challenging, Challenging difficult, overwhelming, confusing, frustrating. And you promised that you were going to send people to help me. Well, the one that you sent to help me, what? Made it worse. So now what am I going to do? I'm all alone here, Lord. You gave me this task that seems impossible. These challenges that I'm supposed to deal with, that I don't know how to do it. You've given me no one to help me do it. And yet he, and then he goes on and he says, and you told me you know my name. I know you by name, so you know me. There's that name thing again. It's not just that God knows his name is Moses. He knows how to spell it properly. It's that God knows who Moses is, what he's like, what his gifts are, what his issues are, what he's dealing with. I know you intimately, God is saying. This is what God said to him. I know you intimately. And that you have found favor with me. So God was pleased with Moses. God liked Moses. God accepted Moses. God wasn't angry at Moses. God knew exactly who Moses was, and he liked Moses, and he loved Moses. And it feels very much, Lord, that you have what? You have a deserted me. That you're not with me through the challenges that I have or the difficulties that are there. That you have given me more than I am able to what? To bear. More than I want to bear. Moses goes on and he says, If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. If you are pleased with me, like you say that you are, just a note there, why is God pleased with you and me? Because we're such wonderful people, because we're so smart, because we work so hard for Jesus. Because of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, he favors us, he accepts us, he is pleased with us through faith in him. Right? If you are pleased with me, and he is pleased with you and me through faith in Jesus Christ, he is pleased with us. If you are pleased with me, Moses says, right, teach me your way. So help me understand, Lord God, what you are doing. Help me understand, Lord God, the way that you operate. Help me understand, Lord God, the things that are happening in my life in the proper way to look at them and to understand them. We, I mean, like to think that we know best. Amen? We do. And in many ways, out of all the people in our lives, we probably know what is best for us better than anyone else except God. When it comes to the challenges and the difficulties and the frustrations of life, to know, to accept, to believe that God knows what is good and right for us even better than what? What we do. Teach me to accept that, to understand it, and to see it. So that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Lord, my desire is to continue to be in your favor, to be pleasing to you, to do your will and to follow you. Help me to do that. Help me to understand what you're doing, where you're going, and what you're bringing about through all of this. And to trust that you have all of this under control and you're making this work out for what is good. Help me to have that attitude, Lord God. Right? 
Then he says, remember that this nation is yours to be blessed. Truth is, it isn't just the nation of Israel that is God's. What else is God? Our lives are God. Whose responsibility is it really to be with us, to walk with us, to help us through the challenges of life? I don't know that I could be so bold as Moses here is with God, where he holds God accountable and says, Lord God, remember, you said, Lord God, that you're pleased with me. You had better take care of me. These are your people. You've got to do this. You can't dump all this on me. Same thing is true with you and me. That we can go to the Lord God and say, Lord God, you promised. You said that you would what? Yeah, I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to take care of you. I am pleased with you. I know you. You are mine because of Jesus Christ. And I commit myself to watching over you and protecting you and guiding you and everything through all of you. And to go to the Lord God and be able to say, and I don't know if I could. Actually, I have. So I shouldn't say that. Go to him and say, Lord God, you promised. This is the promise that you made to me through your son, Jesus Christ. Keep it, Lord. Bless me, take care of me, help me. You know me. You even know how many hairs are on my... The Lord says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. So yeah, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud would be, would be an angel now. As a reminder to the of the fact that the people of Israel had abandoned their God and worshipped a false god, but it did not mean that God would what stop being with them. My presence will be with you. God makes that same promise to you and me: Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Even when it feels like what. you're all alone that God is distant and far away that it doesn't feel as though God is really right there with you the problem is not that God has gone away, the problem is that you and I are having trouble seeing it, believing it trusting it God is always with us, that's the promise he makes through Jesus Christ his son he is always by our side watching over us, taking care of things it's just that you and me sometimes through the challenges of life and the difficulties we have start to doubt whether or not he really is. But God has promised that he will always be with us and he has promised, I will give you rest. Jesus says the same thing in the New Testament. He says, come to me all you who are weary and I will what? Give you rest. It's the promise that he makes to you and me. The word rest there is, who knows, Old Testament word, shalom, shalom. No, that's peace, not too bad, it's Sabbath, I will give you Sabbath, not Sabbath, I will give you Sabbath, it's, it's not just rest like I get to take a nap in the afternoon because I've had a long day and I just need to close my eyes, it's not that. it's not that someday you and I get to rest in heaven, although that's part of it. It's this idea that you and I have nothing to worry about, nothing to stress about, nothing to be concerned about. I have peace of heart and peace of mind through Christ Jesus because I know that who is with me? God. And so it doesn't matter what I face, where I go, who threatens me, what challenges I may have, what frustrations there are, what the doctor says. I am at peace with God because I know I'm at Sabbath with God. Because I know that he knows me, that he loves me, that he rules over all things. Sabbath. This idea of nothing needs to bother me or concern me because I know that I am one with God. How many of you stress? How many of you worry? Yeah. And I don't mean to be I didn't mean to be. <laughs> Truth is, what does that say to God? 
What does it say to our children and to those around us when they see us stressing and worrying and getting ourselves all worked up? When we worry about what's happening in society, when we worry about what's happening with our parents, when we worry and stress about what so-and-so said, when we worry and we stress about what did God say? Know you? Know the challenges that you have? You know the difficulties that you face? I know your strengths and your weaknesses. Not only do I know you, but I'm going to be with you. And then we sit there and we stress and we worry and we fuss. What does that say about our God? says that we're not so sure that he's going to do it or that he can do it. Truth is, God says to you and me, I know know everything about you. And I love you. I know you are pleasing to me. You have found favor with me through Jesus. And I have promised that I will be with you. I have promised that I will give you no reason ever to worry or stress. I will give you rest. I have promised it to you. So Moses, what? Believe it. You don't know what you're going to face when you go out there leading these people for 40 years. You didn't even know that yet, that it was going to take 40 years to get to the promised land. You don't know all the enemies that you're going to face and the challenges that are going to come. You don't know all the evil that is going to come your way. But guess what? You don't have to worry about one bit of it. Because I know, you know, that I am what? With you through all of it. So don't what? Stress. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Moses said to him, Your presence does not go with us. Do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? This this section here where uh, God promises to always go with and give us rest. You know, Moses says, if you don't go with me, don't, I'm, I don't want to go. I pray that almost every Sunday before a sermon. I I don't want to go. I don't want to stand here in front of God's people and speak unless I know that what? God goes with me. I remind myself and I remind God of the promises that he makes that he will always be with me and that he will give me rest, no reason to worry, no reason to stress because I know that God loves me and is with me. I can't imagine standing up here in front of all of you on a Sunday morning and saying, thus says the Lord, if I do not know that God is with me. That's not just true of a sermon, that's true of life. How do you go out into the world and face the mess that is this world? The threats that are in this world, how do you face that without knowing that God is with you? I don't understand how people can deal with the problems in life the difficulties in life, the mess that this world is, without knowing that God stands by my side, He loves me, and He will never leave me. Unless you go with me, Lord God, I don't want to go. Good thing that God says what? I will go with you. And I will bless you. And to be cognizant every day, to have this overriding, ever-present sense of the presence of God in your life, in your heart, in your home, at your work. To know that when you sit at your computer at work, you're not sitting there alone. Guess who's with you? And when you're when you're going to the doctor's office and you're not sure what the doctor is going to say, guess who's sitting with you? When you go to school and you're playing on the playground or sitting in class, you're not sitting there all alone. Who's with you? Driving down the road, uh, sleeping in my bed at night, hanging out with my friends. Everywhere that I go, the sense that the Lord God is with me and he will never leave me and he will take care of me and he will bless me and he will love me. Even the most awful place that you can think of, 
most awful circumstance that you might be in, you're what? You're not alone. And that God has promised that you and I will find rest in Him. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know what the future is. But I know that wherever it leads, He's going to be by your side. And that He's going to continue to love you. And that He's going to continue to give you rest and peace. God said to Moses, you see where I am, 17. I will do the very thing you have asked. What's funny about that is that Moses didn't ask anything. He asked a question, but he didn't ask God to do anything. It's implied. But Moses never really asked God to do anything. What does that tell you about God? He knows. He can read your mind even if you don't ask for it properly or you ask for the wrong thing. God knows what you really need, and he's going to give you what you really need. God says, okay, I'll give you what you ask. Wait a minute. God knows what is right and what is good, and he's going to give you. Why? Because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Does God know you? Is he pleased with you? So God gives us what we ask. I'm not saying that God is a genie, a genie in a bottle, and he's going to grant you three wishes and do everything exactly the way that you want, but he knows. And too often we find excuses as to why God won't do what we want him to do, what we ask him to do. But so many times in the Bible, God promises us that he will give us what we ask for in his name. And too often we sit there and we say, well, God will never do that for me. Well, no wonder he doesn't do it for you. You don't trust that he will. Why should he? Pray boldly and trust that what you ask, God is going to say yes to. And if he doesn't say yes to, it's because he understands what's really going on and what you really need better than you do. He can read your heart and read your mind. But don't dismiss God so quickly. He will do what you ask because I know you, because I'm pleased with you, and I know you by name. And then Moses asked something that I don't know that I would be bold enough to ask. He says, now show me your glory. About um, maybe 12 years ago, maybe more like 15 years ago, I, I did ask this of God, actually. It was an awful, awful time. And I had asked, I had dedicated myself to serving God and God's people. And yet, that very task of serving God and God's people uh, had become almost unbearable because of things that were going on. And I had some hard talks with God where I told him, Lord God, I don't know what you're doing, but I feel like you've abandoned me here. I, you sent me down here. You put me in front of your people here. You promised that you would be with me, and you're nowhere around. And I had some hard talks with God. And I said, if you really want me to stay here, if you really want me to continue to lead your people here and take care of these people, you've got to give me a sign. This is really good. Guess what God did? Nothing. He didn't give me a sign. I didn't get to see God's glory. The Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. Funny phrase there. I'll allow my what? Goodness. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord. In your presence I will have uh, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. And the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. And I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Moses got to see the glory of the Lord. But 
just what God did when he saw the glory of the Lord. He proclaimed his name. He allowed Moses to see him. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So what is God emphasizing? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because he is powerful and glorious. Because he is loving. Do you see it there? Moses wanted to see God's power. God says, I'm not going to show you my power. I'm going to show you my goodness, my love, my mercy. There's another time in the Bible when something similar happened. Elijah was having a rough time, all depressed, feeling down, miserable. I'm the only one left. Woe is me. Blah, 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 blah. And God says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to appear to you. And there was a thunder and a lightning. <laughs> Power, right? The Bible says, and Elijah knew that the Lord was not in the thunder. And there was an earthquake and the whole mountain shook. It just happened to be the same mountain that we're talking about here with, with Moses. The whole mountain shook. And God wasn't in the earthquake. But then came what? Who knows? A whisper. A still small voice. I don't know what it said. It doesn't say. But God spoke. Not in anger. Not in wrath. Not in power. Not in authority. But in a whisper. I wish I could have seen God's glory. I wish I could have heard or felt the mountain shake the way that Elijah did. But God makes it clear to Moses and to Elijah that all we need is the truth of God's love for us. Love that we see in the cross. God never showed me his glory. He never appeared to me. There was never any earthquake when I was going through my crap. But I sat down and I found it in the Word of God. I did. There's three Psalms that I would read over and over and over and over again. I read those Psalms. They got me through because they reminded me that God loves me, reminded me that God will never leave me, reminded me that God holds all things. Didn't get better for a while. A long while. It was a rough road. But guess what? God made it all work out. He always does. Right? God never promised that your future would be walking a walk in the park. He never promised that you would be able to tiptoe through the tulips. Never promised that your whole life would be uh, sunshine and rainbows and unicorns. But a good thing that wherever your feet would go, that you have nothing to worry about, and that you would always be with him, and that you have found favor with him. May God give you the strength to make it for his sake. Amen. Let's stand. join together in our next song, All the Way My Savior Leads Me.
continue with our prayers for today. Those of you online, make sure that you post your prayer requests in the, in the live feed. Um, we pray for Nora, our sister. She's not doing well, so we'll remember her. Uh, we also remember Jay's brother, uh, Jim, who had back surgery. Procedure on his back, so we'll pray for blessing on that. Pray also for Jay, not our sister Jay. This is uh, Deb's uh, friend. Um, he's in ICU, had a heart attack. We pray for him. Pray for Tim Cronin's family. He died of cancer this last week. We'll remember his family, his children in our prayer. This is Deb's friend as well. And also Dan. I don't know if you know Dan. Dan's mom has been diagnosed with liver cancer. So we'll remember Diane in our prayers as well. Um, we remember Mary Kay's sister, Barb. Um, who has a broken hip and needs surgery coming up on her elbow or something, right? So remember her in prayer. We also give thanks to God for birthdays. Uh, Pete's birthday is this night, next week, and Rue's birthday and Will's birthday is this week, and Jubilee, right? Where's Jubilee? There's Jubilee. Yeah. And oh, and who? Oh, so next Sunday we'll pray for you. We don't want to pray for you too early. <laughs> no, because then you'd be then you then your birthday would be a week early and you're just you know speeding up the whole process. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Just making sure. Yeah, okay. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, Sharon. Um, my brother uh, Cam uh, took a fall. Um, that's his out from some stitches. Okay. Yeah, and his, uh, he only has a line line, and the lightning destroyed that, so he, I've been going back and forth every day to help him wash dishes because he can't get stitches in his hand, and so, <laughs> and he doesn't like that when the sister comes and helps him, so I bought him a pair of extra large gloves so he can wash his own dishes. <laughs> Help is one of those things that's a good thing, but it's also kind of a dirty word. Right? You know, none of us like to admit that we need. Yeah. Uh, we'll but, pray he's, for, but he's doing fine. We'll pray for Ken. Yeah. Yes, sir. Pray for Maria. She's helping Jack and Miles and pray for success. And Good job. Pray for the people around you, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Pray for the people around you. All right, we will do that. We will do that. Yes, Deb. Uh, Christopher has his first heart scans. His knee. So we've been praying for Christopher for a while. Um, he cancer. Um, was he declared cancer? No, he wasn't declared cancer. So was it, he did. He finished his treatment, but they're... Yeah. Remind me what's happening. So he had a circle in his leg, and yeah. they removed it, and they removed it with the margin. Yeah. The margin is 100% clean, having a scan to make sure that it stayed that way. All right. Yes, Sharon. Can we ask how you, um, Julie's doing? Um, Julie, I believe, is in California. <laughs> um, we, we will pray for Julie as well. She's battling cancer, it's very serious. To the point that they're not talking here. I don't know if all of you know this, uh, but she's doing well. The doctors actually said, I think she wouldn't mind me saying this, uh, May. It's now July. So um, she keeps checking things off of her bucket list, so to speak. So we will pray for Julie in California with the latest news. Yes, sir. Will. My son Blake had uh, significant foot surgery on Friday and uh, made a success of that and speedy recovery. Okay. Any other prayer requests today? Anything online? Oh, yes. Uh, for Hannah, she starts a new job. All right. Hannah has a new job. All right. Yes. Um, can, you, can you pray for my dad yeah. and mother in law? What's your mother-in-law's name? Um, Valerie. Comfort and strength. Any other 
for a question? Yes, sir. Uh, for a celebration, I'm officially an actuary. Yeah. After <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> so he has been studying for 10 years for this, and these are serious tests. Yeah. They give you like two problems, and it takes you like three hours. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yay! And you know who's really happy, right? Aaron. Aaron is really happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other prayer requests? Today? Nothing online? Anything online? Okay, nothing. Let's stand up. Lord God, remind us always that you are with us, that you will never leave us, that you have our lives in your care, that your presence will go before us, that you will give us rest through Jesus Christ. Lord God, we have nothing to worry about. Forgive us for the times that we have doubted. Forgive us for the times that we have questioned. Forgive us for the times that we have not trusted, Lord God, that you would keep your promise to us. Uh, we know that in Christ we are forgiven. Teach us to live each and every day in the confidence of knowing that you are with us, that you know us and you know what we're going through, and that you will guide us through all of this. We pray for that blessing and guidance on those who are struggling, Lord God, and we bring them to you for your care. Think of those who are struggling uh, physically, health-wise, Lord God. Pray that you would bless procedures and bless medications. You would heal, that you would strengthen, that you would bring home from the hospital, that you would Pray that you would make all things work out for good, Lord God. Pray for our sister Nora, who's not well. Make her better. Pray for Jim with his back surgery, Lord God. Pray that you would bless that research, that procedure, that you would take away his suffering and his pain. Pray for Jay. We thank you for sparing his life from the heart attack. Pray that you would help him to recover, bring him out of the ICU, bring him home. We pray, uh, pray, Lord God. Um, for Diane, who has been diagnosed with, with cancer, pray, Lord God, that you would be with her, that you would strengthen her. Her son, Dan, too, Lord God, I'm sure he is worried. Pray that you would take care of both of them, Lord God, and strengthen them in this difficult time. We pray for Barb, who's going to have to have surgery on her elbow. Pray that you would make the surgery go well, that you would heal her, Lord God. And we pray for Ken, who fell and has stitches, Lord God. Pray for healing, pray for patience, pray for strength, Lord God. We pray for Christopher, who's going to have a scan, have scans. Pray that they would come back, that there was nothing there. Be with Julie, our sister, as she battles cancer. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to strengthen her. Thank you for, for the healing that you have given to her and for the time that you have blessed her with. Uh, we pray, Lord God, uh, that for Blake, who had surgery this last week on his foot. Pray that you would uh, help him to recover bless him lord god and strengthen him in uh, each and every day all those who are struggling with their health we commit to your care and pray not only for physical blessing but for spiritual blessing as well lord god that you would lift up their hearts that you would strengthen them lord god that you would help them to know that you will not leave them that you would not that you would give them hope lord pray for family and friends that you would bless them and strengthen them as well we come to you on behalf of those who are starting new jobs and we ask for your blessing uh, and your success uh, on their new job, happiness, contentment, success, Lord God. Uh, think of Hannah and both Mar and Maria, both of them, Lord God, we commit to your care and ask for your blessing. We pray for those who are mourning the death of a loved one. We think of Valerie, whose dad died yesterday. And we think of Tim, his family, especially his wife and kids, Lord God, who died of cancer. We commit these families to your care, Lord God and ask that you would lift them up and build them up and strengthen them, Lord God. Pray that you would bless them through the grieving process, that you would give them strength, Lord God, and that they would find comfort in your love and in your promises. Be with Valerie's fam Valerie and her family and with Tim's family, Lord God. And finally, Lord God, we give you thanks for the years of life that you have given to our, our brothers and sisters. We thank you for watching over them this last year. Pray that you would fill this new year with joy and happiness and contentment and success and faith and strength, Lord God. May you speak and will and rule and jubilee and commit them to your care and ask for your blessing. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, <coughs> live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. Lord bless you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look on you with his faith and give you his peace. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome, especially to our guests, our visitors. Thank you for coming. Before we sing our last song, take a moment to greet the people around you. Shake each other's hands. of our building you'll see a new picture because remember we had to change the design a little bit for different reasons you can take a look at that you can also begin to see some of the exterior um, materials is that the right way to say it finishes finishes uh, that we're looking at right now there will be a more thorough presentation later on when we have all of the finishes and materials picked out so you can begin to see what we're looking at and what we're trying to build Take a look at that. There's even some stones there. You can feel what they look like and everything like that. All right? Anything else I should say about that? <laughs> yeah. Once we have a more thorough, accurate pricing plan, whatever information, we'll come to the congregation with another another thing. Yes. Um, child protection team would like to make an announcement, right? Yes, yes, Somebody? we would. Yes, yes. Thank you. Great. yes. <laughs> um, just want to thank everybody in the congregation. We've already had one um, policy training. There's going to be another one that we're going to do in conjunction with the rollout of Taking It to Jesus on the 30th of this month. So that will be an opportunity, especially if you wanted to help volunteer for the camp. 
coming up. And uh, we have a couple of new members with our team. Ellery and Ken are both now on our team. So just wanted to thank everybody for helping keep our kids safe from abuse. So if you have any questions, um, please let myself or Sue or Courtney or the gentleman or Pastor know about it. So the, we had a training session back in May, right? May, is that what it was? Yes. All right, so if you took that, then you are trained, so to speak. If you have not- Two parts, yeah. Two parts, right? There's the online coming up, but yes, the policy is trained. Okay, yeah. So then there's an online part to that as well. Um, want to get all of our Sunday school teachers and those who involved with our youth through this whole pro process. There will be another training session on July 30th during Bible class hour. Um, so if you'd like to help out with that, uh, please try and set that, si that time aside. Speak with a member of the team and they'll get you the online portion as well. Um, just trying to do this properly. Right? So speak speak to someone if you have questions about that. Uh, note from uh, Sharing Hope, our new beginnings. This is the ministry that helps out single mothers. We raised $635, so thank you to all of you for your gift. That has been sent to them. So. Sharing Hope, we try and um, invite the community to help out with uh, the food bank, the food, the food bank that we run. So I know it says in the bulletin on Monday, but I switched that because of a conflict for me um, to Wednesday. So I'd love to have your help on Wednesday, handing out flyers. We try and hand out 500 flyers uh, somewhere in our community, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, great, it's just easy thing to do. Just go from house to house and just put a flyer on a door. If you are willing to help me out, you, your kids, whoever, please let me know. Um, I'm still going, whether or not it's just me, I'm going and I'm going to go do it, but I'd love to have your help if this goes quicker. All right, so Wednesday at 10. Um, need some volunteers yet for our soccer camp that's coming up? I think we have five coaches. It'd be good if we had one or two more. If you know something about soccer or something about sports, love to have you volunteer. High school students on up, love to have you help out with that. We do need some volunteers who aren't going to be coaching at all. Just some people to sit at a table, take registration, uh, oversee the snacks, things like that. If you are willing, there's a QR code for the participation. Love to have you help out with that. Also looking for more uh, soccer camp people, people going to the camp, uh, going into grades one through grade six. Uh, invite your children, your neighbor's kids. We're gonna be handing out flyers to the whole community as well. There's invitations on the shelf in the back. Um, love to get, I'm hoping to get about 60 kids. So uh, so we start thinking about that. I'd love to have you guys participate. Um, if you have any questions, please speak to me. Ms. Haley Rice, who is the one who is coordinating that ministry. Um, so looking for campers, not campers, soccer players, and then volunteers to help. All right, any questions on that? Yes, sir. That's third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth of August. Yes. Right, nine to noon. We're going to have it at the park right down there. If Commerce City ever gives me permission, <laughs> even if they don't, I think we're going to go down there. Just <laughs> drag. I don't know. What else. We're going to get started on that. Um, all right. Again, just thank you for letting me go on vacation. I really appreciated the time away. Um, needed to just stop for a while. Needed to stop looking at email. You know the feeling. Just, just stop. So I appreciate it very much. I'm I, I will not be going away for a while again. So anyway, so that's good. Um, otherwise, let's let's close with our last song. Let's stand and join together and guide me, old great Jehovah. Sunday school, Bible class to follow. Bible class will be in here. Okay, uh, guide me, old great Jehovah. Thank you.